Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Skyrim Chapter 3 with Claudius who's looking a bit different but more on that in a second last time in the previous chapter Lydia died and uh, we ran screaming and running away from a Nordic barrow like a, like a little girl and um, it was all really rather embarrassing. So, it's been about uh, a week or so since then. Uh, Claudius is here in uh, Yorvaska. He's been recuperating and there is a bowl in the middle of the floor. How random. And some carrots as well. Oh dear. The companions are a messy bunch, aren't they? Well, anyway, um, it's been about a week. We've been resting, recuperating. Uh, recovering from our injuries and um, our grief as well because Lydia was a very not really a well a friend difficult to say but a loyal fellow soldier at least and um, it was her death that allowed us to allowed us the time to run away and escape from Kvenel the undead ancient Nord tongue down in uh, uh, Volnan, I don't know what the bloody place, place was called. It began with a V, anyway. So, however, we will not dwell on our grief too long, because like anyone, like anyone in that sort of profession, Lydia knew the risks when she signed up, and um, she died doing her duty, which was to protect Claudius with her life if necessary, and it was necessary as it turned out. So. Claudius, of course, looks a bit different. Don't know if, whether or not you can tell very easily on the video, but uh, there it is. He's got some scars. A fair few, actually. That fight left him marked for life. And uh, he's also got a serious beard going on. The beginnings of one, anyway. Um, he hasn't been shaving. And that the, 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 there's an interesting reason for that, actually. I was um, doing a bit of research for a project I've been doing at university into the Romans, and... Uh, the Romans, during a mourning period for someone they knew who died, actually would uh, not shave. Uh, they were allowed what were called mourning beards to grow, and um, I thought it was a pretty neat idea, since Claudius is an imperial and is about as close as you can get to a Roman without actually being in ancient Rome. So anyway, here we are. We've, uh... He's changed a bit, like I said. Uh, he's also a bit beefier now. Uh, it's not very easy to tell because at the, at the minute he's just wearing his regular old clothes. He's not wearing his armor, but um, Pumping Iron has been working away in the background. And um, I can show you, in fact, our current Pumping Iron score, because people like to keep track of this. Uh, it's 28.5 at the minute is our current body weight. Current training, zero. He used this last week to use up all of his current training stored up. And, um, yeah. The exercise is beginning to show. No longer are we the, well, not quite, the skinny, weedy desk jockey that arrived in Skyrim so very long ago, it seems. In any case, here we are, back in your Vasca. And now we've been resting, now we've finished resting, and so on and so forth. It's time to get our asses back in gear, get back out there, get back on that horse, so to speak. I'm hungry and thirsty, apparently. Well, we could sort that out, I'm sure. Now, um, before I go any further, I am going to mention mods. And I'm going to keep it to a bare minimum as well. Uh, I'm sure some of you will be glad to hear. But, suffice to say, I have updated just about every single mod I had installed previously. Um, a lot of my mods were very out of date. And people were telling me to re you know, update them and so on and so forth. Uh, and I couldn't at the time, but I have been able to. It took a very long time to update all of them because of my rubbish internet connection, but it is done. Um, so, lots of updated mods, lots of new features, and I have some more new mods as well. Like these, for instance. Yeah, those are new, aren't they? Well, I'll explain most of these as we go on. Um, however, I'm going to keep it to a bare minimum because I am going to be starting to do mod review videos. For those of you who didn't watch my channel update video, and damn it, you should have done. Uh, and before anyone asks, why did you change your name to Sorcerer Dave instead of Jingles? Uh, you uh, you go watch the bloody video. I'm not explaining it here. It would take too long. Uh, so there we go. But anyway, I'm going to be starting to do mod reviews and so on and so forth. So 
what I want to do really is actually keep the explanation in these these videos to a bare minimum so I can really go into more depth in those videos for the people who are interested so however new mods new mods uh, updated mods I including I have finally managed to update um, interesting NPCs that was the main one that a lot of people were telling me to desperately update because um, a lot of the dialogue was out of date um, and the voice recordings weren't as good and now I have the full version as opposed to the old beta version and I have to admit it is a, a lot better it's a heck of a lot better other new mods include the audio overhaul for Skyrim which I can't believe I didn't wasn't using before honestly I don't think I'd ever play the game without it now um, you will notice some sound changes as we go through again I'll point them out as we come across them um, I also have other mods installed, such as Convenient Horses, because in the meantime, since we last met, dear viewers, Claudius has purchased himself a horse. For Even though he's not particularly fond of horses, um, he has purchased himself a horse for practicality's sake. Um, because it now means we've got somewhere to store all our extra crap in its saddlebags, because I'm using the Convenient Horses mod. Which means also I don't necessarily have to ride the horse. It can actually I can actually order it to follow me around and stuff like that. So yeah, so lots and lots of new things. What else have we got in here? Mod configuration uh, update in a matter of time. Oh no, this is the new matter of time. Is the clock here thing at the top left? You see that sundial type thing that looks a little bit actually like the day night meter from the Baldur's Gate games. Uh, well, that's a matter of time. It's a way of checking the time of day very quickly, like that, without actually having to pause the game and look at what the time is and all that kind of nonsense. So, I quite like that. As you can see, it's around sort of mid morning ish at the minute, according to the sundial thingy. At the top right there, those are bars for Frostfall. Um, the latest version of Frostfall adds uh, meters to show you how cold or warm you are and how wet you are. So, again, very useful stuff. Um, so, anyway. Other things, uh, just quick, quickly before we go any further, I have updated just about everything on here. I now have Moonlight Tales installed. For those of you who know what Moonlight Tales is, you'll probably be you probably know why I have it installed. Uh, for those who don't, I won't explain it yet. It's a bit spoilery, I suppose. Um, and yeah, that's about it, basically. So let's head upstairs. Go and speak to the other members of the companions. We need to go and do a job now. For our man Skewer. Big scary Skewer. Although, quite frankly, at this point I'm not scared of Skewer one little bit. I've seen plenty of things scarier than him. Although, that's a neat trick there you've got, by the way, the U2. Teleporting shenanigans. My goodness. More random pots all over the floor. Uh, what are we paying this cleaning woman for? I, I really wonder. But my goodness, that's a big sword. Well, anyway, we need to speak to Skewer because he's the only circle member we still have not done a job for yet. So uh, we don't have any choice about this. You still need to prove yourself, Welp. I'm looking for work. The so-called prison in Riften leaks like one of their fishnets. This is what happens when you let thieves run your town. The prisoners just walk right out. One of them's escaped, and you're going to find that coward. At this point, they don't care what happens to him, and neither do I. Best to just kill him and be done with it. I'll take care of it. Be careful. This man is known to be dangerous. Yeah, I'm also known to be dangerous, fr Until quite frankly. Uh, right then, well, not a bad start. Go track down a, a, an escaped criminal, then bring him to justice, one way or the other. Not a bad first start, actually. Bit of real guard work, really, but uh, not that we're complaining. However, before we do actually leave, there's one other thing I do want to do. You will remember, some of you at least, um, that we did actually pick up a book when we were exploring the abandoned ruins of the... Uh, of the uh, Vigilant of Stendar Monastery, or whatever it was called. Um, we found a book there, which activated a quest when we read it. 
And uh, it's probably about time I read the books, just so we know what this quest is. So, where is this book here? Ornarol's Fate. Ornarol's Fate in the Realms of Daedra by Lendril Aberaith. Now, we already read this author's note, but uh, in case you forgot what it was, I'll read it again. While I was writing On Holfear the Giant Slayer, I stayed for a time in Windhelm at the new Nieces Corner Club. There, I engaged in conversation regularly with the lo local Dunmer patrons. We spoke of many things, among which the topic of the old Dwemer, sorry, Dunmer and Kaima religions was one that drew my interest the most. It was hard for me to understand how a proud and honourable civilization, once worshippers of the Daedra, uh, how a proud and honourable civilization were once worshippers of the Daedra, sorry, when such beliefs are so condemned within the imperial cult and worship of the divines. They told many tales of the old Velothi, their ancestors, and the worship of the so-called good Daedra of, and of the House of Troubles. One tale, I was told, was of a particular was of particular interest and was a rare insight into the ways of the Daedric princes. I had the story retold many times before deciding to put it down here in these pages. This legend is of the Kaima warlord Ornorol, the leader of a prominent Kaima tribe during the first era, and his dealings with the Daedra. Right. According to Dunmer legend, which is seldom wrong for there is little more important to the Dunmer than their ancestors, Ornorol was a warlord of unsurpassed prowess. His tactical guile and physical strength in battle led his tribe to great victory against the first empire of the Nords on many occasions before the Chimer's homeland was conquered. When the Nords finally took what is now Morrowind and was then Resdane, Ornorol's tribe was killed or scattered, and he himself swore an oath to bring down the Nord's empire. Ornorol took up arms alone, and for many months travelled Skyrim single-handedly seeking revenge against the Nords, or so the story goes. Where the tale becomes mo most notable, however, is when the loss of his homeland and his people eventually becomes too heavy a burden for him to carry. The Dunmer tell how one by one he visited shrines to the Daedric Princes on their day of his summons. Oh, sorry, on their day of summons, and asked for aid in his long quest for revenge. The Dunmer say that on the fifth of first seed, he sought out Hermaeus Mora, the demon of knowledge, whose realm is Apocrypha, the endless library. On the ninth of Rain's hand, he called on a Daedra named Periite, the Taskmaster whose realms are Periite's pits where the lowest Daedra dwell. Finally, on the fifth of mid-year, he spoke with Hercene, Lord of the Hunt, whose realm is the hunting grounds, the forests and plains where Hercene and his beasts prey on their quarry. With each of these Daedra, he made a deal. With Hermaeus Mora, he offered his eternal service for the intelligence to outsmart his enemies. With Periite, he offered his unflinching loyalty for the resolve and willpower to resist all pain and magic. With her scene, he offered his soul for the strength to crush his foes beneath his fist. To all three, he was bound for eternity, and when the time came for him to offer himself up to their will, his deceit was revealed to them one by one. With resolve, guile, and strength beyond mortal limits, he fought the Daedra in their own realms, for in single combat none of the princes could defeat him. He used the gift of Hermaeus Mora to outsmart the huntsmen and his hunters. He used the gift of Hercene to crush the Taskmaster and his servants, and he used the gift of Periite to withstand the crushing knowledge and magic of the Demon of Knowledge. His treachery angered the three princes beyond all measure, and in their rage they came to an agreement amongst themselves. All three at once came down on him with the greatest extent of their power and struck him down. When they had flayed his skin and desecrated his corpse, they ripped his soul asunder each taking a third of his spirit to their own realm. Hercene took his strength, Periite took his will, and Hermaeus Mora took his guile and his knowledge. The Dunmas say that his remains are scattered between the three ancient spots where these princes were summoned, so that all could see the fate of Ornorol and the result of his deceit. These cursed places are said to be tied to the realms of the three princes, as Ornorol's remains are bound to the pieces of his soul still held by the three Daedra. 
These three locations were sites of pilgrimage in ages past, before the rise of the tribunal, when Daedric worship was the common religion of the Kaima. The Dunma say that the, tri the shrines still stand, albeit ruined and forgotten, in the mountains of Skyrim. The intervention of the Daedra in the affairs of mortals is rarely heard of, and even less often recorded. If this legend is indeed true, it is of great significance to our understanding of the Daedra and their motivations and purposes. So, and that activated a quest here. Yeah. I've read a book that told of a Kaima warlord named Ornarol, whose soul was divided and taken as a trophy by three Daedric princes. According to the legend, the realms of these Daedra can be reached at their ancient altars in the mountains of Skyrim, where the remains of Ornarol are still bound to the fragments of his soul in oblivion. So, let's see. Huh. So we could find these altars for some reason, if we wanted to, I suppose, out of raw curiosity. Maybe we could find some sort of power there. Honor rolls. Power, I suppose. I mean, the guy took on each Daedric Prince in single combat and wasn't defeated. The guy must have been an absolute beast. Hmm. Intriguing. Well, we don't know where these places are. I'm just going to take that as well. I'll keep that tech for now, I guess. Um, and uh, but, it, but interesting nonetheless. Who knows? Maybe we'll come across it. Right. Um, so it's probably about time we were leaving. Although I do want to just grab something to eat before we leave. Uh, seared slotfish, sweet roll, tomato. Ugh, still hungry, really. How about? Boiled cream treat. Full. Excellent. Right. Uh, you know what? I have an apple pie and the rest of these cream treats for the road. <laughs> and uh, raw venison, maybe not. An apple. There we go. Although it looks like I'm going to have to go and refill my water skins. Um, I'll have to pop in the bannered mare to do that, I think. So, yeah. Oh, and... Um, Oh, a couple of other features. I'm about to use it anyway, so I'll, I'll mention it now. I have updated customizable camera, which previously I was using pretty much just to uh, keep my field of view at around 80 rather than the default 60, because uh, that gives me a headache. But um, in the new version, it has other, fe other features, including this, which you saw a little bit of earlier when I was doing the intro, um, which allows you to switch which side of the screen your character's on in the default view. And it also enables you to do this view which is a totally customizable extra third view you can go into um, which by default the way I've got it set up is actually centered behind the character in the middle which um, I quite like actually because um, it, well, it sort of reminds me of Morrowind's third person camera actually plus it's pretty cool in that it doesn't zoom out uh, the same way the normal one does if I do this like that when I get a weapon out it doesn't do that. Uh, when you're in the centered view, you can get that out, or you can get a bow out, or whatever, and it stays in this sort of region, which I quite like. It's a little bit sneaking as well. Um, so there you go, that's pretty cool. And also, and I think you guys are going to like this, I have a map mod. Look at that. Isn't that cool? This is the paper map mod by Warburg, um, and I, I absolutely love it. I, I'd seen like paper map mods before, like the one for that comes as a part of a quality world map, which is what I was using previously. Um, however, I didn't really like it so much because, as you well as you can see here, it's actually 3D. Um, it's not completely flat. But because he's changed the way the camera works, we're now top down properly. It's not quite as noticeable, and actually, kind of, it sort of works actually. Um, I sort of like it like this. Um, but whereas before it was literally just the normal map reskinned, and it didn't look very good. But this I like. I just I love the idea that the, the Claudius has a whole bunch of maps in his in his backpack or something that you can just whip out and have a look at like this. Look, see, you've got the old map of Cyrodiil tucked away behind this one as well, and. 
Ah, it's brilliant. I love it. Such a high quality scan as well. As you can see there, um, it's got that burlap sort of canvasy texture to it. Um, I don't know for you. For those of you who didn't actually get a box copy of Skyrim when it was re first released, um, what you got with that box copy, like I had, um, was a map of the province of Skyrim, which looked just like this. Um, and it was made out of, unlike the ones you get these days, um, the first edition ones, they, the maps were made out of this sort of burlap canvas material, uh, just like it's seen, you can see here. Um, I've got mine um, at home somewhere. But, ah, I absolutely love this. So much cooler than the, the weird Google Earth map um, that's in Skyrim by default. Ah, I much prefer this. Much prefer this. So. Yeah, where is this escaped convict? Oh, he's over here by Riften. In fact, he's up near Shaw's Stone. So, look, yeah, there you go. Ah. Quite a journey. We don't, we don't believe we've been to Riften yet, have we? Nope, I have not discovered this place yet. So, we're going to be going on a journey to Riften, by the sounds of it. Should be fun. Hopefully. Another map. <laughs> yeah, so off on our way to Riften. People have been um, saying that, um, by the way, I should probably nip this in the bud, I guess. People have been saying that um, Claudia should go and get revenge on Kvenel for killing Lydia. And um, while obviously he intends to go back and kill Kvenel at the earliest opportunity, um, Doing so right now would be a bit stupid because we probably wouldn't be able to do it. Some other people said as well that he should bring like loads of White Run City guards with him and do it that way. And uh, I don't want to do that though. I don't want to go and get a bunch of guards killed fighting a evil ancient ghost of an ancient Nord off in a barrow. Which um, yeah, Volenrude here, which isn't really even in. White run hold. As you can see here, one of the things I love about this map is you can see the hold borders. Um, and as you can see, Volenrude's actually in the pale. Um, it's not as part. It's not part of White Run hold, so it wouldn't really make much sense for me to bring a bunch of White Run guards off to into the pale with me to fight this this Kvenel bloke in Volenrude. Um, in fact, if the Arl found out about it, you'd probably be pretty cross. So. We're not going to be doing that. Kvenel, I will return and destroy at a later date, mark my words. However, not just yet. Oh, right, here we are. Oh, disgusting weather as usual. Um, but never mind, what are you going to do? My Imaginator settings, by the way, have changed a bit as well uh, recently. Um, I'll post updated ver an updated ver version of the specs for that in the description of the video. Hopefully, so long as I remember to, anyway. Um, but uh, I've, I've changed it a little bit. It's not as bright as it once was because I don't need it to be bright as it once was anymore because I can fix that sort of thing in editing now. Um, so yeah, and um, it's slightly less saturated compared to before. Slightly less. Um, so anyway, here we are. Here's our horse. Which, if I go over to it and press this. Oops, I said this. Our horse has all sorts of crap in it. Um, useless bollocks mainly, a cooking pot, our tents, um, and my armor, which I'm going to need, actually. Including... Uh, where are they? Uh, yeah, I want those, actually. I don't want the braces, I want the gauntlets. Um, and I want... Uh, where are, uh, that I want as well, and is that it? 
Yeah, there we go. Um, so let's get our armor on. Let's get suited up and ready to go. Wolfkin, wolf skin, sorry, cloak of black resist frost. I'm using the wolf skin cloak, uh, by the way, instead of the old bear skin one. Um, I don't know, I had a change of heart about it. I think I actually prefer the look of the wolf skin one to the bear cloak. Um, I just sort of do, so I'm using this instead. I solved the bear one because I didn't need it anymore. So here we are. Awesome. Um, I can also pop my helmet on, I suppose, or my hood. I admit, I quite like the hood. Um, oh, and the shield, of course. Um, I still don't have any crossbow bolts. I suppose I could go and buy some, but uh, I'm too lazy for that. Besides, I've got an elven shortbow now and plenty of arrows, so I'll be using that for a bit, I think, instead of the old crossbow. So there we go. Now, is that still hotkeyed? Yes, it is. Can I hotkey this helmet, please? There we go. Um... Probably a bit uncomfortable. We'll do without that for now. Don't really need it. So yeah, convenient horse is pretty useful for those of you who haven't used it before. Um, it adds a whole bunch of new features, including the ability to tell my horse to follow me. So now I actually have to ride the horse. I can just have him sort of trundle along with me, like so. And he'll kind of follow me around, and there you go. Come on, horse. Um, so that's nice. I can tell him to stop. There we go. Um, I can also tell him to do stuff by whistling. However, I do need to practice my whistling first. Um, you do that through dialogue with NPCs. It's interesting. Um, and there's one other cool thing. If I go over here, I can actually... There's a couple of other cool things, actually. I can call my horse using a horn, which um, I've got here. So I'll show it to you right now. Summons the horse. I can jump straight on him. Um, obviously, the idea is that it's basically just a way of getting your horse to come straight to you if you've got it lost or something. Um, I like it. It's pretty cool. I also like the horn. There's a choice of two. One which is like a sort of Nordic one, which is like an old goat horn. And this one, this trumpet thing, which I, I love because it looks so sort of Roman. Suits Claudius perfectly. So there we go. Um... Also, when I'm on the horse, I can actually, I believe, if I press, there we go, I can actually quickly jump off the horse by pressing G. Assassin's Creed style, almost, actually. Um, so, there we go. Ah! Have at thee. Um, Im uh, imaginary opponents. Um, ah! Take that. So, there we go. Convenient horses. Pretty cool mod. First time I've used it. Um, do like it. I'll probably go into more detail with it, with it if I do a review of it. But anyway, for now, let us ride. Decided to get a horse. Because, uh, well, to be fair, um, having the horse in that previous episode was actually very useful. The short time that we had it before the damn thing wandered off of its own accord, um, it was really, really useful. And now with this convenient horse is installed, I can actually put things in the horse's saddlebags, and uh, it's just, I love it. It's great. Um, it's very, very, well, convenient. Huh. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Um. So, yeah. Off we go. On our first quest, it's, it's it's not very spectacular, is it? Really, to be fair. Go capture some old, some escaped convict, but uh, what are you going to do? We've been out of it for a little while now, and I suppose this is as good a warm-up as any, really. Whoa, hello. Uh, just die. Ugh. Ah yes, and uh, when you kill things with convenient horses, it automatically loots them, which is kind of nice, I guess. So there we go. Didn't even have to get off the horse. <sighs> Nothing's ever easy, is it? Nothing is ever as easy as it's supposed to be. 
White Ren, are you going to be alright if I leave you to it? I don't know if you are, are you? Oh boy. Come on then. Over here, dragon. Come on. Hello. Uh, you know what? I should probably pop that on, shouldn't I? Hello, dragon. Come on. You big scaly bastard. Oh boy, that was loud. Right. Come on then. How about me? Oh my goodness. Right. I'm hotkeying this short bow. I'm equipping some hawkish arrows. Short bow, short bow, short bow. You're going to be two for now while I don't have the crossbow. Right, okay. Time for a bit of horse archery. This is going to be awkward. Did I even hit him? I'm not sure that it did, honestly. It's a bit inaccurate, this, isn't it? Wow, that, that, that roar is loud. You're an awfully big dragon, aren't you? Oh dear. Come on, tell me that hit. Is this doing any damage to you, dragon? Whoa, boy. I have a feeling that if this guy hits me, I'm going to be very, very dead. Hits me with his breath, anyway. Oh! Yeah! Wow, wow. Well, you know what? Let's find some cover. Um, you might want to run, random farmer. Big, gigantic reptile with the ability to shout fire at people marauding across the countryside. No, you're not bothered by that? Okay, fine. Oh, God. Uh, right. First things first. No, not apple pie. <laughs> Good grief. Um, health potions. God, I'm moving slowly, aren't I? Is that? Uh, no, that's that's normal. It's normal. It's just because of all the armor I'm wearing. Um, okay, right. Come on, dragon. Yeah. Oh, come on, what is going on with this bow at the minute? The arrows are just sort of going three feet into the air and then falling down again. Eat giant icy mace. Or just race me alive, you know. Whatever you feel like doing, I guess. You're the dragon here. I mean, you know, you can do what you want, I suppose. Okay, uh... Slow time, unrelenting force, whirlwind sprint. I can't decide which is more useful. Let's give whirlwind sprint a go for now. Whoa! Oi! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop that, that's cheating. Fireballs. Wait a minute, can I hide in here? Whoa! Uh, I foresee this dragon being a bit of an issue. Some dragonborn I am. Is there any way I can get to the roof of this? No. Keep 
forgetting I have the Eagle Eye perk, actually. Oh. You just had to come and ruin my day, didn't you? Everything was going so well. I was having a nice, easy return to adventuring. And then you came along. Oh! Right. Yeah, eat that. Ow! How the hell did you do that? You can't attack me through walls. That's just, that really is cheating. Uh, farmer still completely unfazed. <laughs> You wouldn't have to be a relation of Joel Rings, would you? Just saying. Mind you, the dragon seems to be leaving you alone, so I guess... If the dragon was leaving me alone, I guess I'd return the favour. Where are you? Whoa! I do have Run For Your Lives installed, by the way. It just doesn't seem to be working, for whatever reason. This game, so bloody buggy. I love it, but it is so buggy. Ah, that was me prattling on last time about the dragons being too freaking easy. Yeah, yeah, I was, wasn't I? Saying these dragons were far too easy to kill. <sighs> One moment. Right. Done some tweaking with deadly dragons. Stop that, really. you're, just, you're messing with my aim. Hopefully this will be a slightly fairer fight. Oh. Oh, you're firing artillery at me now, are you? You bloody scumbag. Come here. Right, that was... I'm glad that didn't count as actually hitting me then. Yep, I'm saved coming like a little bitch. Sue me. Whoa, yeah, see now I've lowered the difficulty slightly. I'm not getting one-shotted by his breath weapon. Which I, you know, really rather appreciate, actually. I'm level 20 almost, that shouldn't really be happening to me. At least not with a blood dragon, I suppose. Really? Really? Come back! Oh no, you, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't fly three miles away and then call fireballs at me, mate. It's not how this works. You have to fight me mano a mano, or go home. Or, you know, mano or, or a reptile. Or, or, or whatever. I don't know what the Spanish for reptile is. Or the Spanish for dragon, now I think about it. Ow. Ah! How did he do that? You can't shoot flames around corners now, mate. That's that's just that's just not cricket. Where are you? No. Oh. That was a rhetorical question. There you go. I can't get out the door now, can I? Uh. <sighs> Sneaky green bastard. Whoa. Flip his wings, come on. There we go. Aha! 
quick save again. I need to really find out if there's a Chasm version for Skyrim. I really shouldn't rely on these buggy quick saves. Say, Dragon, have you ever heard of that extra advanced version of Rock, Paper, Scissors called Rock, Paper, Scissors, Windmill, Dragon? Because guess what beats Dragon? And it's not Rock, Paper, or Scissors. You know what? Where is it? Slow time. Oh no 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 no. Damn. Oh well. <coughs> <coughs> Worth a try. You have to pardon my occasional coughing by the way. Viewers. I'm not ill. I'm just... It's very cold at the minute and damp um, where I'm living and... It really aggravates my cough when the conditions are like that. Oh, right in the chin. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, yes, health potion. Brilliant. Hang on a minute, do I have a... I do have a resist fire potion. Yeah, well, for heaven's sake, it's just flames. How can it damage me that much? <sighs> stupid dragons being stupidly OP. Yeah! Oh, wow, really? This game. <laughs> this game. <laughs> I'm gonna make you pay for that, mate. I am so gonna make you pay for that. Come on, land. Do it. I am gonna cheese you so hard, pal. I'm gonna shoot you in the wing, the other side of this grind, gr grindstone thing here. Till kingdom come, if needs be. Come on, land. There you go. Hey, <laughs> didn't like that. Your fireballs can't get me in here, pal. Come on. Oh, awesome. Health, please. Now, what would be most appropriate right now? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Right, almost half health now. There you are. Farmer still not even remotely bothered. Fair play to you. I wish I was as fearless as you. Hey, come on, you come back. Thank you. Oh, that was close. Now, where are you off to? You can hear you stomping around out there. Oh, nice try. Nice try. Ooh. At least my temperature meter is reading I'm very warm. It does sound about right. Where are you? Whoa, okay. Ow! Smacked in the face! Yo, that hurt.
Thank God for... Really? You're poking your face through that? Well, if you're going to do that, I guess I might as well exploit it. You know... I, you're going to... No-clip through the walls, pal. I'm going to shoot you in the face when you no-clip through. I am not above doing that. I'm really not. See? Ah, you like that, do you? Come on. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you can't get me in here. Oh, you know what? Fine. I'll play according to the laws of physics, even if you're not going to. Because you know what? I'm better than you. That's why. I feel I've made up for that little incident where you, with you grabbing me through the wall, frankly. It's just damaging you at all. It is just very, very slowly. Is this to do with the fact that I have very little stamina? It may be, you know. Never mind. Come on. Right. Right. I was about to say then, I'll do the dignity of finishing you off with my sword, but then the game crashed, so... But, I'm a man of my word, so... Uh... Ah, sword mace. Who cares? Same difference. Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins! Thank you! <sighs> that bloody time. I'm glad to see you're so... Your feathers are so ruffled there. <sighs> Good grief, look at this. It's such a mess. Well, there we go. Barely five minutes out of White Run again, and... <sighs> Is this the world say way of saying, Welcome back, Claudius? Because, you know, f fuck you too, world. Fuck you too. Never liked you anyway. 